I just really like playing with my brothers really and I'm very sporty so that's why I want to grow up to be a sports girl. Although I'm a bit of a fuss pot, that's also to do with my OTT, a bit of over the top, which I think is quite nice, because I get it my own way. When I had seizures, I didn't really know much because I was having a seizure. But when I woke up, everything felt, felt a bit dizzy and I didn't know where I was. I couldn't really get up and walk. So, say like I had to go to the toilet, I had to bring a bucket to me because I couldn't really walk. It's like, oh, awful. It stopped me from swimming and I can't go in the deep end anymore where the floats are and I love going on the floats but hopefully my bits are going away. Parents worry about looking after children with epilepsy because it's the scariest thing in the world for a parent to see their child having a seizure and hopefully this DVD will make parents feel confident and competent about administering emergency or rescue medication to their child. Looking after a child at school who has epilepsy is a very scary prospect for any teacher or teaching assistant. However, there are ways and means in which we can help you to feel more confident. When Lulu was going to start school, I was very nervous. She, she was going to a huge school in London. Um, but I love the, actually the attitude of the head teacher there who said, who told me, I remember him, I had a meeting with him before she'd started. And he said, we don't know anything about epilepsy, but we'll find out, she'll be fine. <laughs> and actually, you know, even though he was saying, I don't know anything about it, because the attitude was there, and it is all about attitude and not panicking, it was brilliant and, and I felt much more relaxed. A child may need emergency medication if they have a seizure that lasts about five minutes or that is not normal for them as an individual. Most children that have epilepsy will take anti-epileptic medication. However, sometimes the seizures break through and if they break through and they last around five minutes, that child should be requiring buccalmedazolam at that point. I think the school and, and our family had quite a lot of work to do to kind of, you know, communicate with each other and learn how to do it because they didn't have any training, they had no idea about it, I'm not a professional. So what I would do is at the beginning of each year go in and talk to all the teachers and all the teaching assistants and tell them my experience of it all and actually they've, you know, they, we've had some fairly rocky times in terms of the amount of seizures Lulu was having there but they have just did brilliantly with it. And because they relaxed and didn't, well not relaxed, I think that's the wrong word, but they didn't panic, they just dealt with it brilliantly. And uh, we're hugely grateful to them actually. Buccalmedazolam will be given to treat children that are having generalised tonic-clonic seizures. The most important thing to remember during the seizure is to keep the child, the young person, safe. So if there are any dangers or any hazards, you need to protect the child from those. For example, if you can, put a cushion or a coat underneath the child's head. It's very important not to put anything in their mouth, your fingers for example. It's very important to make sure there are no objects that the child may hurt themselves on. And it's especially important that you stay with that child until they have fully recovered, even though they might be a little bit sleepy after their seizure has finished. It's very important to know when to give buccalmedazolam. So you need to be aware of timing the young person's seizures. Soon as the seizure starts, you look at your watch, time the seizure, 
Has it got to nearly five minutes? If it's getting to five minutes, you must make sure you're getting ready to administer bacomodazolam. Never restrain the young person because you could do more harm than good. It's very important that you keep calm. You need to check the child's individual healthcare plan and you're looking for when the last dose of bacomodazolam was given, what dose needs to be given now, and you need to be checking the expiry date on the packaging to make sure that it is still in date. If you have somebody with you, this is often useful because they can help you check also. You need to check the time that you're about to give them a dazolam. You need to document all of these things at the end, so this is very important. You need to remove the cap of the pre-filled syringe. Then you gently pinch the lower lip. By pinching the lower lip, you'll be able to see that the teeth are clenched. You can carefully, at this point, insert the syringe into the buccal cavity. Slowly press the plunger. If possible, you can give half of the liquid into the left hand cheek and then half into the right. But if this isn't possible, you can deliver the full dose into one cheek only. You need to observe the child for signs that the seizure is stopping. And if you're at all concerned and the seizure doesn't appear to be stopping, then please call an ambulance. Um, I was told on one of our trips to hospital when Lulu had had a long seizure um, by the doctors when I was talking to them about that. It would have been great to have somebody kind of go over it with me more thoroughly because it's quite scary. Having that midazolam there was like a sort of safety net. It was quite comforting. You know, even if we didn't have to use it, it's just this idea of having these long seizures and having nothing to stop it. And because we live in the middle of the countryside, ambulances take quite a long time to come. Um, so it was brilliant to have it there. And as I said, it, most of the time, it stopped the seizures. A child's individual healthcare plan should contain information around their diagnosis, if they have any allergies, what medication they take on a daily basis. Any information on giving them their medication, for example, do they need to take it with food, on a yoghurt? Do they have any seizure triggers? Is there a description of their seizures? This would be really useful for teachers when the child is in the school. And how long the seizure lasts for. So we know from our experience at Young Epilepsy that it makes a huge difference to children's lives and that they feel comfortable that the people around them can support them whilst they're having a seizure. We've dealt with many parents and we've taught a lot of parents how to give emergency medications, buccal midazolam. Parents are always so positive with their responses because they feel that they then have gained the confidence to help their child when they're having a seizure. As a family, it's been, as I suppose initially and at times quite hard, uh, having Lulu with epilepsy. Um, but it hasn't actually really stopped us over the years doing anything, really. I mean, we didn't go to far-flung places on holiday, but I don't think I'd have done that with children anyway, young children. Um, I was asking my boys the other day, because Lulu's not having so many seizures anymore, and I was asking the boys if, if they felt that you know life was significantly better now she's not having seizures and they shrugged their shoulders and said well nah the only thing is we don't get so many mcdonald's anymore because every time she had a seizure i would take them well my husband would get mcdonald's because he doesn't cook and i was busy with lulu so that was their thing just not quite such much food now she's not having so many seizures it's just basically like a little problem it's just like a little normal girl just sprinkled with a little problem just a little extra thing really just have to be more careful. Yeah, oh yes, yeah. um, normally like we get takeaways like KFC, McDonald's, McDonald's and all but that. We don't usually have it now. Because um, because our dad deals with it, and Mum makes food. Mm. Food. A bit dull, I think. 
I started playing cricket and when I first tried it out, I found it was a bit hard. Second time, I loved it. And that's why I want to be a cricketer when I grow up. We like pretending we're sisters. Yeah, without nobody else. But... I know some, Molly, Molly found something in the woods. Yeah, I remember when we went to walk with a real bone and a real skull, two real yeah, we found skulls. Two, we found two skulls, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. a badger what? and a, a deer. Yeah. yeah, a badger and a deer skull. And, and a knee one. And a yeah, shoulder blade. Yeah. Yeah. Sky jumper. I jump out of aeroplanes. Seriously, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no? No ideas at all? Teacher? Nope. Doctor? <laughs> no. Uh, Spaceman? No. A fire engine? No. no. <laughs> I'd like to be a singer. Um, a DJ. Why do you want to be a DJ? Um, so I can get, so I can be famous. And um, when I'm older, I want to be a gymnast. When I'm older, I want to be an actor. When I'm older, I want to be a farmer. Why? What? Because I read lots of books and lots of people are farmers. And you can, why can't you buy some lollies and eat them? Or all in one gun and sweets together. <laughs> what was that all about?